This morning I woke up with a headache. Right now I don't have a headache because I took care of it. And I want to explain what's going on in the body when a headache happens. Once you understand what's happening, then it gives you a number of options for preventing and treating it. These things become more clear and obvious at your various options that you have. So I don't usually do this. I don't usually have big meals before I go to bed, but I did last night. It just so happened that I had gotten home from the library after writing and your brain consumes a lot more energy than the rest of your body for its weight. It consumes like 20 times more than other cells apparently. So doing anything that's like takes a lot of mental activity, writing, reading, speaking, these kinds of things use up a lot of energy. So long story short, I was starving. So I grabbed a, a pound of grass fed beef from a local farm. I know the farmers personally and the cows just, they sit out on pasture, fresh green grass all day in the winter. They're given baled hay of that same grass. And uh, grass is the healthiest plant in the world. It's on par with algae. And in fact, I would say algae is probably a bit healthier most likely because simply because it has access to all the minerals. Every mineral that exists is in the ocean. Whereas our soils are usually generally depleted of it. So, but anyways, compared to other plants, grass is right at the tippy top. It's incredibly nutri nutritious and filled with all kinds of nutrients. It's got enough protein to make a cow grow to like 1500 pounds. You know what I mean? Like there's some big cows out there. The reason why it's able to do that is because it has four stomachs. Cow is a class of an animal that's classified as a ruminant, which means it has four stomachs. Cows, sheep, sheep, goats, those are all the other ruminants. And they can digest grass. If you tried eating grass, you'd probably throw up for one. You wouldn't get the protein from it because you, human beings don't have the four stomach thing. It's basically four vats of bacteria that just break it down. We don't have that capacity. So this is why it's an amazing cycle of life. The cows sit on the pasture. They eat the grass. They accumulate the nutrients just all day and all of their tissues. And this is why meat is the healthiest food. Because one of the things like, for example, beta carotene, which is a precursor for vitamin A, that's in grass. That's in some plants that humans eat as well. Um, but that's not the form that your body needs. So you can't even call that vitamin A, really. Um, it needs to be converted in the body. And for many people, especially if you have low thyroid, which is probably 100% of people, at least at some times, um, their thyroids aren't functioning properly. All you have to do is eat a meal with unsaturated fat, and that will block thyroid activity. Anyways, in that situation, you, people will have a difficult time converting that precursor to vitamin A to the actual utilizable form. The other option is to eat a, eat a cow, grass-fed animal. I never promote animals grown on feedlots. But that cow is already is a very efficient converter of that vitamin A to the form that we need. So long story short, I ate grass fed beef last night. Really healthy choice. The uh, the organ meats of that animal, that's the healthiest food for human beings by far. You can look at the nutrition content of like liver versus like a piece of celery and it's just it's ridiculous. But at the, in this specific case. I do eat liver once a week, but last night I had grass-fed ground beef. I spiced it up with some taco seasoning and other seasonings, salt, pepper. I put a little spoonful of tomato sauce on top. That was nice. And I cooked it up with garlic, onions, and chow down. For dessert, after I ate that, I had some peaches. I don't even know if I'd call that dessert. That's just the carbohydrates that I eat with my food. And I had peaches, and they were good. But the thing is, I didn't eat enough. And therein lies the problem. This is where the headache begins. And this is where we go down the little rabbit hole and start to understand what's happening in the body when you don't have enough carbohydrates with your protein or even without your protein. Everybody knows that glucose stimulates insulin. Now, insulin has been called the fat storage hormone. So you eat glucose, and the idea is that insulin will rise. It will sweep up from the bloodstream some of that glucose and move it into cells and will create new fat cells. So people say carbohydrates are fattening. It's partially true. Um, but the 
thing I want to, the point I want to make is that nothing is more insulinergic than protein, not even glucose. So you eat a, a meal of protein without carbohydrates, and what's going to happen is your insulin is going to go up. And even if you have carbohydrates, you, have, you better have a lot, is what I'm saying. Because if you don't, the insulin spike from the protein will lower your blood sugar, and that's called hypoglycemia. And one of the things that's really important to understand is that when you are hypoglycemic, when your blood sugar runs low, and this can happen just from over time, like you have a certain amount of blood sugar in your body right now, eventually you're gonna run out because your body's using it. So hypoglycemia, whether induced by a high protein meal in a pretty severe way like that, or just by not eating carbohydrates altogether, stimulates a cascade of events. And the first thing that happens when your body or when your bloodstream runs low on sugar, uh, your body upregulates and increases the production of cortisol and adrenaline. These are two stress hormones because hypoglycemia is an emergency in the body. So it increases stress, cortisol and adrenaline. Cortisol is basically its action in this situation is to break down your muscle tissue. So it breaks down your muscles, which is not good because muscle is good to have. It breaks down your muscles into amino acids, which then are distributed to the liver. And in the liver, through a process called gluconeogenesis, they are converted into sugar, into glucose. So you can not eat glucose and you can pretend like sugar's bad, like the society tells us, which is really, really silly and weird almost, considering how essential sugar is. But even if you don't eat sugar, if you avoid that in your diet altogether, you will still get sugar, but you'll force your body to go into stress to get it anyways. Adrenaline, that's the other component here. And adrenaline is the one of the main mediators of a process called lipolysis, which is the breakdown of your fat tissue into free fatty acids. So while the cortisol will break down muscle into amino acids, the adrenaline will break down your fat into free fatty acids and release those into the bloodstream. Now, there's a very important concept called the Randall effect. And basically, it's a competition of substrates. So basically, if you have a certain level of glucose, and an even higher level of free fatty acids, those free fatty acids, it's a competition between these substrates, basically. Depending on the amounts in your bloodstream at any given time, if there's an excess of free fatty acids, it will inhibit your cell's use of glucose. So that's what's happening in this situation. Eventually, your free fatty acids will elevate to a certain level where you can't use glucose, and therefore, your cells begin oxidizing Instead of a healthy cell, which oxidizes, fully oxidizes glucose, you're now in the stress field, the sickness, stress state metabolism, and your cells begin oxidizing free fatty acids. Now, to the extent that those free fatty acids in your tissues are unsaturated, and this tends to, the unsaturated fats tend to accumulate in your tissues with age. So as you get older, this will be even more applicable. To the extent that the free fatty acids liberated from your fat stores are unsaturated, they will, once oxidized, be metabolized into very toxic breakdown products. Uh, depends on Depending on which unsaturated fat you're talking about, let's talk about omega-6, arachidonic acid. That one happens to break down after oxidation into a toxic metabolite called prostaglandins. Many people haven't heard of it, but it's a very important thing to understand. Prostaglandins, when you research, they are the mediators of pain. You understand what I'm saying? You understand where I'm going with this? Without prostaglandins, your headache would not exist. And the prostaglandins are there because your body broke down your fat and your fat was unsaturated. And when it was oxidized, it produced toxic fragments known as these prostaglandins, which cause a headache. So, now we're into the realm of solutions as to far as you understand what's causing the headache, what are the ways to prevent it and to cure and reverse that headache if it's already there. And this is what I did today. The Randall effect is probably the best way to look at this. So, in the situation where a headache occurs, your free fatty acids, your bloodstream has enough free fatty acids that it's inhibiting 
the oxidation of glucose by your cells. So one thing you can do is have a whole bunch of sugar. Now, not all sugars are equal. Um, if you eat a loaf of bread, for example, that's carbohydrate, that's sugar. It doesn't taste sweet because it's a long chain of, it's a chain of sugar molecules that's so long it doesn't fit into your taste buds where sugar is sensed. You understand what I mean? Like a lock and key thing. The key doesn't fit into your the taste receptors where you can get that sensation of that sugary taste because it's so long. But once you break that down, it will taste sugary. Um, but anyways, the point is bread is almost 100% glucose. And conversely, this is why I don't recommend that method because that will spike your insulin, which will make your blood sugar, it will maintain that lack of stability in your blood sugar. And you will be right back in that stress state very soon. Conversely, I recommend fruit. How does fruit differ as a carbohydrate? to bread or pasta or potatoes. Whilst those three that I just mentioned are 100% glucose, fruits, with a few exceptions, are 50% glucose, 50% fructose. And while glucose stimulates and spikes insulin, fructose actually inhibits insulin production. So it's a much more balanced type of food that you can eat. Fructose has been vilified. And yeah, if you get I'm not talking like start sucking back on high fructose corn syrup. That stuff's been like implicated with being like spiked with mercury. And yeah, I'm not saying like high fructose corn syrup is nothing that you want to eat. That's for sure. But fructose in and of itself is not bad. And it can actually be medicinal for the reasons we're about to talk about. Free fatty acids are in excess in your blood and they're inhibiting glucose oxidation, which is needed for healthy cells. So... Medicinally, you could elevate your glucose consumption, and you should, but there's another thing you can do, and that's lower the free fatty acids in your blood, and you can do this by taking factors that inhibit lipolysis. There was a study with 10,000 natural substances found in various plants, medicinal plants, and found in nature, and salicate was number one out of all 10,000 for its ability to extend, to extend the lifespan, I think it was Drosophila fruit flies. Salicate extended the lifespan of fruit flies more than 10,000 or 9,999 other natural substances. And what is salicate? The active ingredient in aspirin. And for the same reason that salicate is good or is effective at extending lifespans, it also is effective at reversing headaches. We're talking about the free fatty acids in the blood. Aspirin or salicate inhibits lipolysis. It's a direct inhibitor of lipolysis. So it'll prevent the release of free fatty acids from your fat stores into your bloodstream and it'll lower the amount of free fatty acids, thus reducing the competition for glucose so you lower the free fatty acids, you increase the glucose through a good carbohydrate consumption like peaches, for example. Even plain white sugar can be good in some situations. It's not a good long-term solution because it's so pure. You don't have minerals or anything bound to it, but it can work medicinally. You lower your free fatty acids, you elevate the glucose, and suddenly your cells begin metabolizing that glucose properly into ATP, cellular Water, they produce water as a result as well, but also, very importantly, carbon dioxide, which keeps uh, your vasculature open. It's a vasodilator, and it also moves oxygen into cells. I don't want to get too much more into that, but carbon dioxide is a key player in that. So, one of the things you can do, take a gram of aspirin, and also consume a bunch of fruit and that will help your, your cells start to oxidize and when it comes to aspirin another thing or one thing one of the things that's well known to do is prevent prostaglandin production and that's a downstream effect of inhibiting lipolysis you see if it prevents the free fatty acids the unsaturated free fatty acids from entering the bloodstream that means they'll never get oxidized and that means the production of prostaglandins will be reduced so that's how this is all working here and that's 
my way of breaking this down and trying to make it trying to make it understandable so that you can reverse and prevent headaches. I'm Mark from End All Disease. If you haven't already, head over to my website, endalldisease.com, and sign up for my newsletter, and you'll get notifications of all my new videos, articles, and books that I'm working on. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped, and we'll see you there.